Hey, well, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, first of all, I want to welcome all of you for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, I'm Jack Hinojosa, and I'm the CEO at CDR, and uh, the pleasure of being the co-chair along with my uh, co-chair partner, Cherry. Uh, Hello. I know Thanks to meet everyone. Thank you yes. for coming. This yes. Why don't we just uh, take a moment? We a lot of us know each other, but I think there's, we've also invited some folks who have not uh, joined us before. So why don't we just go around and uh, introduce ourselves briefly and uh, I'll, I'll pass it along to uh, Luis Huereca. Luis? Sure, uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us uh, here on our, in our final meeting for vaccine outreach for the subcommittee. Uh, I'm Luis Huereca, the community outreach coordinator for uh, child development resources. So. We'll pass it down the line. Gabino? Yes, uh, yes, good morning, everybody. Gabino Aguirre from Santa Paula. I'm uh, working with the county campaign on uh, vaccine access, and I'm the president of Lucha, which is a nonprofit corporation, and the uh, pro bono executive director of El Centro del Pueblo in Santa Paula. <laughs> Javier? Uh, my name is Javier Gomez. I'm the I'm the uh, director, artistic director of the Enla Kids Cultural Arts Center, and we believe it or not, next year we'll be celebrating 50 years. So, so we've been uh, around, uh, and also we've been uh, 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 one of the members, the founding members of Lucha. So we, we're actively involved with that. Congratulations, Javier. Mm -hmm. Julio. Hola, hola. Can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Julio Alcala, and I've uh, probably worked on this campaign in many different ways, from canvassing to media support to getting the word out all over the internet. So uh, glad to be here with everybody. Glad to be here, Julio. And you know what? And I want to thank you for uh, being a partner with CDR since the 2020 census and vaccine outreach. And I know there's many more projects on the horizon that we're going to collaborate on. So thank you for, for all your time and your support assistance. Dave Shermer. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Dave Shermer with the Ventura County Office of Education, and I'm the Director of Communications here. Good to see you, Dave. Joe? Yeah, this is Joe De La Cerda. Uh, I've been working with Gabino for many, many months in, uh, in all the different projects that he has going, and Everything's winding down now, so this I wanted to make sure I was here at the last meeting, and I appreciate all the fine work everyone's done here, and uh, it's uh, just a wonderful collaboration of uh, some wonderful people, uh, great ideas, uh, and uh, just just a pleasure to see the community working together. And thank you so much for all the things that you guys are do, doing. Uh, Joe, thank you so much. We we appreciate all your assistance and support as well. Yvonne? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to this meeting. You know, we're all working on the front of making sure that we inform our community of some important issues. You know, never did we thought COVID would hit. I thought, God, how could this ever happen? But it happened, and we're here to support our community. So I'm the Executive Director of El Concilio Family Services, and very happy to be here with you and hopefully working on some collaborative efforts to continue this work that we need to continue to help really stop this pandemic. Well, thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you for all your uh, your work as an organization and leader in the community. Veronica. Hi, good morning. I'm so from police, and I'm working along with El Concilio and Yvonne and Julio. And I've been working with the youth, trying to get um, more youth involved in outreach within our community with COVID. Thank you for being, being here this morning. Thank you. Caridad. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buen día. Mi nombre es Caridad Vázquez, participante de la funda o trabajador de la Fundación de Campesinos, eh, pero también promotora eh, de salud en el condado, ayudando a la comunidad. Eh, mucho gusto y buen día. Gracias. Also, I wanted to remind everyone that uh, we do have Spanish interpretation available, and you can see your icon on the bottom of the screen, and you can select your language of preference. Uh, Nita. 
Hello, good morning, everybody. I'm Natronita, and my friend Sandy's also here. Thank you for letting us pop our heads in, and thank you for everything that you've all been doing. And um, we're really excited, and we'll just keep our uh, vaccination efforts. So, thank you. Thank you, Nita. And, and uh, nature needers out in the woods somewhere with the fireplace going, so nice and comfy. <laughs> uh, do you want to introduce Sandy or? or sure. Sandy? Sandy, are you here? I know we've been playing hide and seek all morning. We're not I'm in the same. Here. Okay. There's trying to take my hiding space, Nita. I know <laughs> you. <laughs> well, she popped in and out. She's a she's a she's a hard one to keep uh keep yeah, she's uh, playing hide and seek. Yeah, she's so busy. She's always running around in the community. So she just popped her head in and uh really wanna wanna thank uh Nature Nita, Sandy Sanitizer. Of course, the the Ventura County Community Foundation, Gabino, for for you know allowing us to, with the approval of funding, uh, to develop some public service announcements featuring uh, Nature Nita and of course Sandy Sanitizer. Uh, so uh, we 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 created uh, a fun way of uh, getting our important message out on the importance of vaccine awareness and education. So so thank you too for your creative your creative. Uh, <clears throat> your creative approach to getting out the important message to the community. Did I miss anyone? Uh, Molly Krill. Molly. Thank Hi. You <laughs> Hi, Jack. I'm Molly Krill. I'm the Youth Services Manager for Ventura County Libraries, and we hope that we can help in any way possible to get this important message out. Great. Great. Uh, Thanks for being here, Molly. All right. So with our introductions, and as Luis mentioned, this is our final meeting uh, of our subcommittee. It initially started as uh, uh, a subcommittee for the 2020 census. And then we, uh, since we established such great trusted relationships with our community partners, we just continued our, our, our networking and our collaboration uh, on the vaccine awareness and outreach initiative. And it's really been a pleasure uh, getting to meet and work with all of you. Uh, I'm gonna move to the second, uh, Item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting on May 19th. Uh, can I get a motion and, uh, and can we get an approval or if there's any questions or changes to the draft minutes? Can I get a motion on the minutes? I make that motion, Jeff. This is Gabino. Thank you, Gabino. Can I get a second on the minutes approval and then uh, I'll go ahead and ask for uh, votes. I'll second it. Great, thank you, Terry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, great, thank you. And once again, thanks Luis for uh, always documenting very clearly our conversation and discussion. It's great to have a record of our, of our work together. Um, updates, we're gonna now turn it over to uh, Gabino to give us some, some updates. Gabino? Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you all for joining this call. Uh, as, as most of you know, uh, we've been working on this campaign for a while now, and even though it kind of waxes and wanes, so to speak, it kind of slows down and then it kind of comes back. So we're hoping that uh, this is a tail end. And one of the things that we have learned and, and we've been, uh, that has been emphasized by our uh, county medical uh, officer is that, uh, you know, it's something that we're not gonna stamp out we're not going to eradicate it. We just have to adapt and we have to live with it. Uh, something along the nature of annual, perhaps, flu vaccinations. Uh, that's, that might be a way to go. But uh, unfortunately, uh, COVID-19, is. it looks like it's here to stay. So uh, as organizations, since uh, at our last meeting, I provided some statistics on our outreach. So I will update that uh, in, uh, with an additional uh, 30 days of work. So uh, to date, we have reached between uh, mid-February and the end of June, we've reached over 160,000 people uh, here in Ventura County. Uh, that is, and uh, 60,000 families that we've touched, uh, we've uh, helped with uh, over 2,000 individuals uh, who have been vaccinated. And then we've uh, assisted with uh, 
helping test, uh, provide testing for 11,000 individuals. So all of that together uh, represents probably about uh, one fifth of the county population is what we've touched in the last uh, three months. So uh, funding, uh, this cycle of funding, which is round three of funding is, uh, is due to end at the end of June. So uh, to, uh, because the pandemic is still here, uh, we have, we have and are asking our present partners and other organizations to continue the campaign uh, by either incorporating the dissemination of information on protecting yourself and the community against COVID, uh, incorporating that information into your regular workflow and uh, continue with uh, volunteers that each of our organizations respectively have and uh, we're working with the Ventura County uh, Department of Public Health to supply information and materials for that distribution. So the idea then is to the, continue the campaign, although more, more on a volunteer basis very because of the lack of funding. However, in terms of funding, uh, we just heard last week that the state has put forth an, an additional $230 million to, to, to continue uh, this, this campaign. I don't know how that funding is going to filter down to local counties or municipalities or organizations, so that is still to be determined. Uh, however, also, some of us are continuing to work on the campaign directly through grants that we've received uh, from state agencies that include uh, the California Department of Public Health, the uh, what's called CWAP, the uh, COVID Workplace Outreach Project, and uh, and most recently, a grant opportunity that will carry uh, organizations through the end of December. Uh, that uh, that is being uh, organized and uh, made available by the California uh, Department of Industrial Relations, and uh, that that grant that I just mentioned through the Department of Industrial Relations then is, uh, has a, not only a focus on COVID education, but it targets uh, the workforce. So, uh, and also I think that the uh, UFW Foundation is going to continue their work as well. So uh, Caridad can, you know, let us know uh, on, on that. But overall, I think that uh, we've done our best in protecting the community and uh, you know, preventing the loss of life and uh, lots of suffering uh, that would have occurred uh, with uh, these, this type of uh, virus uh, impact. So anyway, once again, thank you all for participating on this. And uh, as we say, la lucha continua, <laughs> the struggle moves on. You know, it continues. So I'm um, looking forward to continuing our relationship with all of you. Thank you, Gavino. Yes. And at, at the end of our meeting, we'll have some final words and comments. Uh, but I, before that, I just want to thank you for your leadership in so many areas uh, from the census to the vaccine outreach. And, and uh, in the spirit of true partnership, you exemplify strong leadership and we really want to thank you for all your efforts much appreciated. gracias gracias does anybody have any questions for gabino on any of the information that he shared with us this morning gabino you mentioned uh you mentioned the the funding from the ind uh industrial relations yeah is that is someone applying for that funding locally here from Ventura County or? Yeah, there, there's organizations that have been funded by uh, the uh, labor workforce assistance, the, uh, the COVID workplace outreach project, uh, which is called CWAP, which was uh, being provided by uh, the labor workforce assistant, uh, uh, assistant uh, department. And uh, so those partners were invited to uh, apply for the next round of funding. So, Got it. Okay. so Lucha from uh, Lucha and Poder Popular were one of those organizations that were invited. So I think uh, MICOP has been a recipient before 
I'm not sure if uh, Ivan El Concilio was uh, was part of that, uh, but uh, yeah, there's there's two or three organizations in the county that have uh, been invited to apply, and I just submitted a, a grant proposal to them, and uh, so we expect to uh, start work on uh, July the first, uh, carrying us through uh, December the thirty first. Thank you, if, if I may interject, if sure, you don't mind. Sure. Um, I, I so mind. we've been part, another arm of the funding from the state is the COVID um, Community Health Project, CCHP. Yeah, right. So we've been, we've applied for that one and we've had um, two rounds of that. So we've continued that. There, We did get invited to apply again for the third round, which starts, it should start in um, July for us, mm -hmm. depending on how we finish the second round. Uh, and that'll go through December. So we have our proposal in to continue that work and that effort. We want to continue to support the work that we've launched, um, you know, in support of the school districts and support of, you know, the Oxnard School District and maybe other school districts as well. We really want to expand, especially now with this new focus of, of reaching the children um, zero to five. That's why we're here today. We want to make sure that we can support the efforts that are happening out there and maybe add a little bit more to it. We're very eager to do that and make some effort in, in making inroads to that population since it's a new venture for us and new uh, for everybody. Um, so that is continuing. I know that the state has a few more funding uh, than um, neighborhood projects um, that goes through the end of August, but that only ends in August and that's only $5,000 grant so people can apply for up to two rounds of that. Uh, if you finish a project and finish it with you know, as long as you use up to 5,000, you can apply for a second one. But um, that had an originally ended in June, but they extended it all the way to August. So that's a, a possibility right now for anybody that's been involved with doing COVID outreach and education. And, and is that with uh, VAX 58, uh, Yvonne? Yeah, so this is to the state. So it's the VAX 58 program that the governor has. Mm -hmm. So the governor put in the funding so that it can continue through the end of December for that what we call the CCHP 3.0, which is the yeah. third round yeah. of funding for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations. So hopefully Mark. that helps. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Extremely helpful. Are there any other questions? All right, well, it's a, it's a nice transition into our, our next item is our, uh, we wanna open it up to updates and group discussion uh, with, the, with the great news of the uh, FDA approval on the vaccines for children five and below uh, has now, as all of you know, has been approved. So uh, I know from CDR's perspective, uh, we're very interested in, in uh, hosting some pop-up clinics at our central offices in Oxnard. And uh, we, I know Luis has been talking with uh, some of you uh, about collaboration and partnership Luis, can you give us an update on where we're at with internally here at CDR? I know we've also had some conversations with our, our program directors for our Head Start preschool programs and also our, our director for our subsidized childcare and resource and referral uh, sides of our agency. Can you give briefly an update on where we're at and what our, what our thoughts are about uh, hosting some future pop-up clinics at our, at our office here at central office? Sure. Um, so I, I, I've had the opportunity to speak with Yvonne and, and she shared some, some really good ideas. I know Javier with NIKH has, has also been very interested in, in uh, being a part of it. Uh, we've been updating uh, Dr. Aguirre on it as well. Uh, we did meet with a couple of our executive uh, 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 team and they had mentioned that they were very supportive of it and just want to know really what, what the dates are, uh, what we're looking at, the, the times, the hours. We obviously have a lot of space uh, here at, at central office um, in the parking lot. Uh, if we decide to have it out, outdoors, there's been a, a couple of events that have been held there recently. Uh, so our, STEM, our STEM night was one of them and uh, the, the layout was really great. I know Javi, uh, Julio was out there uh, recording some of that as well. So I think the thing is just to, to decide how we're going to do this, what dates are we looking at? I know Moderna uh, has a series of two shots with, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, four weeks in between. Uh, Pfizer has three uh, with the, the second one. I think there is, if I'm not mistaken, again, three, two to three weeks in between. And I think a little longer for the third one. 
So whether we're committed to doing this for a series of three pop-up uh, clinics is, is, is kind of like what I was looking at or, or thinking about. Um, we do have some staff that would, I think would be interested in, in helping us out and volunteering some of their time or if we were able to, to provide them uh, with some, some pay during those hours, it will most likely be on a Saturday, Saturday morning. Um, but uh, the idea was that we, we would form together this, this group that would meet and plan all the details for it. But just wanted to kick around some ideas today and see what, what everyone thought about it. I know Yvonne had mentioned um, having a kind of um, uh, information a session that we can invite parents to that just kind of gives everyone an, uh, updated information on, on the vaccines uh, and, and able to answer a lot of their questions. So um, that, that was, this was kind of the thought today was just to kind of get that, that discussion started and see what everyone thought and, and maybe even kind of targeting a possible first, first clinic, first date for that one sometime in, in July. Mm -hmm. Luis, you also attended the webinar <clears throat> that talked about, uh, and, and you, you came away from that webinar with some, some, some general uh, ideas. You, I know one was that they want the event, they were encouraging uh, that the event be family friendly and a family friendly focus. Uh, so that, that gives us some uh, opportunity to you know, share resources about our respective agencies. Uh, and, and, you know, bring in some things. Uh, I know I attended Yvonne's pop-up uh, teen vaccine. She had a food truck present, uh, you know, things like that. This is where we can really uh, collectively, we can come up with some ideas on, on the type of pop-up uh, event we would like to have. The second is where do we get the vaccines from the California Department of Public Health or from the Ventura County Public Health? Do you, um, did, they, did they talk about that? Yeah, I'll make this really quick and then I'll open it up for everyone to, to uh, sure. chime in on this. Um, yes, uh, CDPH did uh, have a, a session uh, about a month ago or so, maybe about a month and a half ago, anticipating that this vaccine will be available soon and then just sharing ideas of how to put this together and how to make it a little bit more family friendly and uh, more colorful and more interactive. Um, similar to the way that Yvonne has already done with El Concilio and a lot of those events, which have been fantastic. So um, that was that was a recommendation is to just to keep doing that. Um, CDP, I did ask if we would work directly with CDPH or should we work with Ventura County Public Health? The, their response was either one would work if Ventura Public Health was overwhelmed and too busy with a lot of things that were going on and, and not able to assist so much with some of these uh, clinics then we can reach out to them as well. Uh, I know CDPH, similar to uh, Ventura County Public Health, would also provide a lot of assistance and a lot of materials that we can also uh, distribute to all the families that would be attending. So uh, so we have a lot of support there, without a doubt. Okay, thank you, Luis. Why don't we open it up for, for a group discussion? If Yvonne? I can interject. Yeah, go ahead, Yvonne. Um, yes, we've had some great successes with having some of these clinics and making a family friendly event. Um, we noticed that when we were doing some clinics that were just pediatric, we were turning people away, not only children, but some adults that were ready for their booster or they were ready to get their, their next vaccine. So we went ahead and moved with the state and the state had a mixed kind of a clinic. So it allowed it for us to have it all the way from five years old to adult to seniors if need be. Um, I'm really happy that this last clinic that we had, the county stepped up and, and helped in one of the clinics we originally had with the state, they weren't able to follow through, which was unexpected because, um, you know, some of the, the mobile clinic that was assigned to that site got COVID, so they were sick, so they couldn't come, and the county right away stepped up, and they did a mixed clinic. They did it from, you know, 5 to 11, and then the, the adults, so the way they set it up was perfect. It worked really well. Um, so I was hoping that somebody from the, the county was here. I'm not too sure what their plan is for um, doing the zero to five. You know, if they're going to keep it only zero to five, um, I have a feeling that the, the state will go a mixed clinic as well. So one of the things that requirements that we had with a mixed clinic was if we wanted to do a family friendly, they because they supported us with a food truck, they supported us with even having radio remotes, but they have to be scheduled at least four weeks in advance. So I'm waiting to hear back if they're going to follow that same format for round three of funding, and I'm thinking that they would, but um, I'll have more information next week about that. 
I'm hoping that that's the case, but, you know, I'm open to whoever can provide the clinic. I don't know if the state will have requirements in the beginning to the zero to five, since it's a very specialized population that we make it more for children. Um, that's something to think about, but I thought by having a partner like with CDR, if we have it at one of your facilities where it's very friendly for children, we can have send you the sanitizer there and things like that to bring them out and get them enthused. Uh, and we, we bring in our, you know, our superhero capes. The kids love the superhero capes. You know, one of the nurses mentioned that as soon as the superhero cape goes on, the kid just transforms. He's a hero. You know, so um, we're so we're looking at making it something very friendly, very comfortable for the children. That's going to be the focus. This and hopefully it might open up, you know, I think in the future for it to be for the full families. But I think uh, the way I'm seeing it is that it's going to have to have a focus with the children zero to five. So if we can network with a group that has a, that large population um, that we can connect with the parents on different facets, you know, whether it's email, with email and with maybe mass texting and also with maybe setting up like a, a family night uh, or maybe, the, you know, at, at a certain center where you see a large um, traffic where we can set up a booth and just give information now just to connect with the people kind of to personally invite them to the clinic. I think that makes a diff big difference. Julio has been involved with doing that kind of canvassing to the community where we're at, where we make a personal touch to the client by giving them the flyer personally and answering any questions they may have about COVID. And I'm sure we're going to have more questions. So we were thinking maybe we should have like a family night, uh, like a town hall for the the, the parents to come out and then maybe even have a doctor there. That all takes planning to do, right? But um, we're open to whatever is, 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 you know, we can do that you know, to be able to outreach to all those families because it was very successful with the support of the Ventura County Office of Education and the Oxford School District where they helped us get the word out about the clinic that was happening with all of that kind of uh, communication tools that they have. So it made a big difference. That's great. That's very, very, uh... We're glad you're here, Yvonne, to give us some of your insights. Uh, really appreciate it. So I love I love the family night theme, superheroes. I love it. I love it. I just love those concepts. So uh, we'd like to hear from uh, some of our other uh, community partners who uh, would be interested in uh, joining us in this effort for the pop-up clinics. You, you can utilize the Enlaquet Center, you know, because we do uh, a multitude of different things. Uh, one, you know, we have our bus with uh, the TV set up now so that we can park it somewhere and showcase whatever is going on. Information can be shared on that. Uh, second one is the, uh, our kids are doing the bike right, right around and uh, doing a canvassing in the areas that we've been doing. And so that's, that my kids are bike riders. So they, they'll do uh, the display of, of our different uh, feather flags that we have uh, promoting the vaccine. And then the other one is obviously uh, the strength of my kids is that they're musicians. And, and each time that we've gone to a particular site, like uh, in Nyland Acres, we performed for, uh, for the uh, Nyland Promise over there when they had their vaccine, plus their food distribution and other outreach efforts that they were doing. UFW was there. Uh, Community Action was there. And, and then a lot of the neighborhood uh, promise uh, volunteers who were part, part of there. So, you know, I always offer whatever we as uh, the Enlakets can uh, provide, you know, we're, we're available for, for those events. You know, the, the, the night, a community night, that sounds really good if you make it a Noche de Cultura, a combination of culture, music, and vaccination, you know, so uh, mm -hmm. I think it all works in. Great. Great. I'll just mention that BCOE, we have a early childhood programs department um, and they're very well connected with other agencies that deal with really young children, first five and others. Um, and I know the director there would be happy to spread the word on whatever is happening. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to help in any way I can with the communications. Thank you, Dave. Dave, you've always been uh, there to support us and uh, the director of the early childhood programs, Elisa McFarlane, and also the executive director for uh, First Five of Ventura County Petro Pulse. Uh, we've been meeting 
gosh, over two years now on, on different initiatives and we meet every couple of weeks on a Friday morning. So I'm just thinking now that uh, we will definitely uh, mention this as well to our, uh, we're calling ourselves the Early Childhood Task Force, uh, but we have three representatives from each of the three respective agencies and we work together in partnership. So I'm sure that the, they'll all be on board on getting the word out uh, once we decide on a uh, location and date and uh, event. So thank you once again, Dave, for assisting us with that. Could I? Oh, Molly, you had, Molly, you had your hand up for a while. And I think Nita, uh, you may have had your hand up as well. So uh, Molly. Thank you. Um, the library uh, partners with First Five to provide parent and child together classes uh, to families with uh, children uh, under from three and under. So mm -hmm. we could certainly promote during our classes in the fall um, and as well work with the first five classes that are using the libraries. Um, but we could also, if there's an event, we could bring our mobile library to the event and um, help to uh, support by giving out steam kits and, um, and books to families. Uh, so any way that we can help, we'd like to do that. That's wonderful, Molly. Thank you so much. Uh, Nita, did you have? Did you I have, did. Yes. I, I wanted to mention that Sandy and I both attended the team pop-up clinic and that was really amazing. And, um, you know, we hope that we are also invited as well. We're also available uh, upon availability. Um, but, you know, also working with CDR, I know that we have great partnerships with the Head Start. And if we were to have flyers, you know, at the centers to, um, like uh, Yvonne mentioned, more personally invite them, as well as on um, the subsidized department on our side as well, that we can also send emails and when we see the families, let them know and I really also like the idea of having like a pre uh, event to kind of let them know what's going to happen but um, you know Sandy and I are more than happy to help however way we can to help these children you know be at ease and feel comfortable and really make it a you know a familia a, commu a community and um, you know and I also really like the idea of having possibly you know a doctor to assist and help with those kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, questions that maybe families may have, but um, yeah, anything and everything, we're here to help also, so. Thank you, Nita. And I know that one of our public service announcements, we uh, we had Car Dr. Carmen Steller uh, yes. present, so uh, she was wonderful in that PSA. She's bilingual, she's local, mm -hmm. and works for the County of Ventura at the Mand Mandalay Bay Clinic, so I'm sure if we reached out to her, I know she's very busy, but uh, she was wonderful in our public service announcement. So uh, we have a relationship with her. Maybe she would be open to participating. Caridad? Caridad, did you want to speak? Hola, buen día. Antes que nada, mil disculpas. Algo hice con mi cámara y no la ah. puedo encender. Este, um, Es, es importante todo lo que todo lo que están diciendo, toda la cooperación y me encanta la, la unión que, que estamos teniendo. Pero una de las partes que, que yo uh, en el aspecto de mi trabajo es caminar en la comunidad y llevar la información a mi comunidad. Eh, caminando dentro de mi comunidad, compartiendo toda esta información para que se acerquen a los centros de vacunas, a estos este, centros de clínicas móviles para que los niños se vacunen. Eh, me doy cuenta de que la comunidad tiene miedo. Pero aparte de eso, aparte del miedo, tiene una muy mala información. Entonces necesitamos, creo que empezar a combatir esa mala información que tiene nuestra comunidad. Hay muchas cosas que están pasando alrededor dentro de nuestra comunidad para con nuestros niños, eh, para con nuestros eh, adultos, para con nuestros bebés ahora que están siendo de seis meses a cinco años ya se pueden vacunar. Eh, ¿Qué información es la que tenemos? ¿Qué tan clara la tenemos para las familias? Muchos padres se intimidan cuando tenemos esa información a medias en inglés y en español. Muchas padres se intimidan cuando tenemos esa mala información del de vecino que me dijo, sabes que a mí me cayó muy mal la vacuna, no vayas y te vacunes. No sabemos qué te va a pasar. Eh, dentro de este caminar en, en mi comunidad o en mis comunidades, lo que estamos mirando es que eh, nos hace falta más unión, más participación. 
Ahorita estoy viendo aquí al señor Dave, siempre está, yo sé que siempre está. ¿Por qué no darnos la oportunidad en las escuelas, en alguna, elegir una, dos, tres escuelas y decir, ¿sabes qué? Vamos a hacer un evento para nuestros niños. Son confiables. Estos son unos pisos confiables en los cuales podemos llegar y poder a vacunar a esos niños. Podemos armar un, un, sabemos que tenemos que tener para estos niños un lugar especial en donde ellos se sientan confiables y sobre todo confortables para poder vacunarse. Es bien triste saber que a veces tocamos puertas y le digo porque las he tocado. Gracias a Dios he tenido la participación de mi, de mi distrito escolar de Oxnard, de mi distrito escolar eh, en Santa Paula, del señor eh, Morales. Eh, well, well, Mr. Morales, Dr. Mora Morales, different places, the school district. Tengo esa participación y gracias a Dios participan con nosotros para cuando hemos llegado padres a solicitarles, ¿saben qué? Ayúdenos pero proporcionenos también un lugar en donde podamos llevar a esos niños que ustedes tienen bajo su techo o tienen sobre sus pisos. Eso también es importante, es darnos esa confianza en estos, en estos diferentes departamentos educativos para que nuestras familias también se acerquen. Hay muchas familias o muchos padres que probablemente nunca se han acercado a ese piso escolar. ¿Por qué? Porque tienen ese miedo podemos a empezar a ayudar, a, tal vez hacer una campaña, escoger dos o tres escuelas en el condado de Ventura. Que sepan que ahí está una, una base en donde pueden ellos ir a vacunarse, que es confiable. El Departamento de Salud se presta a diferentes, eh, se presta escuchando cuando le promueves. También ellos pueden aportar ideas para poder ayudarnos en diferentes lugares, diferentes oficinas en donde, nos, donde los padres se sientan confortables. Eh, yo he mirado esto, he escuchado esto en donde los padres nos dicen, ¿sabe qué? Pues a veces voy y ni me saben explicar. Eh, me he quedado con las familias y les digo porque yo sigo caminando ahorita, yo estoy compartiendo los folletos de vacunas, estoy compartiendo los folletos de COVID, estoy compartiendo pruebas de COVID, estamos compartiendo cubrebocas todavía ayudando a la comunidad. Seguimos caminando, eh, eh, ayudando a nuestra comunidad, al Departamento de Salud como promotora en mi trabajo también. Eh, entonces, eh, creo que es importante también escuchar todos estos puntos de nuestra comunidad. Hay comunidad que simplemente eh, no te quiero ir desde el momento en que llegas y le vas a ofrecer los lugares de información o centros de clínicas móviles, te dicen, ¿sabes qué? No me traigas nada de esa información. No la quiero. No me han hecho sentir confortable. Tenemos que sentarnos a platicar con ellos y me he quedado con ellos platicando una, hasta una hora. ¿Cuáles son los puntos por los cuales ellos no confían en este departamento? Todos esos puntos se los he dado a Sara. Todo lo que hemos visto alrededor esos, los, los hemos platicado con Sara, con diferentes eh, lugares, así como en los departamentos de educación, así como ahorita les estoy diciendo a ustedes, Ahorita que estamos aquí, que somos un, un, un equipo, eh, y para mí este equipo es un, un equipo fuerte, ¿verdad? Es un equipo confortable, es un equipo en donde podemos apoyarnos. Entonces, lo que podemos hacer es apoyarnos entre todos y empezar a buscar un lugar que sea confortable para estas familias, que se sientan confortables. El señor este Gómez, estábamos viendo en, en Island, hubo muy poca participación, anteriormente había mucha participación. Sin embargo, ahí estábamos, estábamos apoyando a la comunidad, estábamos escuchando a la comunidad. Y es, son partes que no, no, no tenemos que decir, pero después del evento, por ejemplo, yo me quedé a compartir información sobre vacunas en esa área. Eh, eh, eso, son diferentes puntos y la gente, mucha gente de ese lugar, ¿sabes qué? Ni, ni me enteré o no sabía. No entro a la, al sistema digital para poder este, eh, informarme porque no tengo tiempo, tengo un trabajo. Entonces, todo esto que están, están planeando es buenísimo. Sí, pero sí me gustaría que hubiera más parte eh, cooperativa por los departamentos educativos o los departamentos en, en unidades a lo que están haciendo esta, esta base para poder ayudar a nuestra comunidad. Es un 20%, me parece, muy eh, en, nuestra, en nuestro condado, que hace falta que se vacune. Eh, tenemos que lograrlo. Hay quienes no lo van a hacer, pero probablemente ese 20% si nos unimos, podríamos reducirlo a un 2% de los que no se quieran vacunar. 
pero hay que informarnos y hay que tener esa información activa con, con los padres de una forma clara, de una forma bien sencilla. Yo les digo, cuando un padre va y te platica en sus palabras y te dice, ¿sabes qué? Tú puedes ayudar a salvar una vida. Tú puedes ayudarme probablemente a ayudar a tu familia, pero también déjame ayudarte. Empezamos a platicar sobre qué son las vacunas, por qué las vacunas, por qué debes de tener alguna prueba, por qué sabes que conoce esta información de lugares de información a donde puedes ir eh, para ayudar a otras familias, probablemente tu vecino, tu amigo. Eh, ¿Y qué es lo básico que yo conozco de estas vacunas? ¿Qué es lo básico que yo conozco de estas pruebas para poder dártela así a ti claramente? Entonces, eh, el señor Gavino aquí está también. Eh, yo he estado en Santa Paula compartiendo todas estas, estas líneas de, de, de lugares donde pueden ir a vacunarse las familias en la comunidad. Santa Paula, Moore Park, Fillmore, uh, Piru, uh, Oxnard. Ahorita estoy, por ejemplo, en, oh, hay, un, hay un código postal a 93041 aquí en, en Oxnard, que es por UNM. Eh, la gente es... es cuesta mucho trabajo llegar a esa gente en esa área. No, no quieren, no, no quieren un simple papel en donde te está diciendo, ¿sabes qué? Aquí puedes ir y buscar ayuda para vacunas o para test, o aquí tenemos este recurso, el cual te puede ayudar. Caridad, thank you so much for your, your comments there and your, your knowledge and your experience of what you have uh, personally experienced uh, with your outreach to the community and, and to families and parents. It, your perspective is extremely helpful as we start working together, uh, united in our messaging to our community. So uh, I once again wanna thank you and uh, for your comments. And also uh, we know that you're a trusted partner with us and that you're on board to assist as well as the other organizations that are joining us here this morning. So, so thank you great feedback and ideas. We could probably spend an entire night of discussion around messaging to our community and the importance of uh, you know, reassuring them that uh, we answer all their questions at the best to uh, our possibility that we can and uh, share the information in a respectful and with a lot of dignity to the, to the families that are, especially those that are, are fearful and still have a lot of anxiety around The, vac the vaccine and the pandemic. So uh, as Gabino mentioned, we're, you know, we're, we've made great strides to minimize the, the impact here in our local community, but you know, the pandemic is still going to be with us for, for, for a long time. So again, thank you for your, your comments and your perspective. Sí. So uh, a couple of things that I wanted to share You know, I think one of the things that uh, Yvonne shared in terms of planning that this, if we partner with this California Department of Public Health, you mentioned Yvonne about a four week advance notice in terms of a date. Uh, so the earliest that I think that we could do an event like this would be sometime in August or September. I know that in August, uh, CDR is also partnering with uh, Uh, another organization, the Sri Lankan Youth Organization, uh, they have a, an event called Operation Rise, and we're planning to partner with them uh, to host an event in August. Maybe we, uh, we have a four o'clock um, Zoom meeting with them this afternoon, Luis and I, to, to nail down a date for that event, but perhaps we can uh, combine the events or If we can't combine the events, then uh, look at something that we're not stretching ourselves too thinly here at CDR since we are going to be uh, committed to that Operation Rise event. Uh, I don't have a date yet for that event, but we hope to, uh, to nail that down uh, this afternoon uh, during our Zoom meeting at four. Uh, does anybody else have any comments or question? Does August or September... Uh, I'd rather do it sooner than later, but I also know there's a lot of pre-planning that needs to be done uh, collectively as a group. So what I'm proposing right now is in August or September for the first pop-up clinic. And again, we're, we're more than interested in, in do, hosting it here at our, at our, our site at Central Office in, in Oxnard, uh, or considering also uh, other locations uh, in the community. 
So how does that sound in terms of a, an August, September date for the first of which would be at least two or three uh, additional pop-up clinics, uh, re depending on the, uh, the vaccine, whether it's Moderna or Pfizer? Can, can I suggest one uh, po possible date also? Uh, we're we're going to be partnering up with the Port of Wainimi. Uh in September. They're going to be having the Banana Festival, and uh, that will be a beautiful time to have a pop-up clinic there at the uh, festival. It's going to be September, I think. Miguel was telling me the 24th, so September 24th, and we're we're going to be participating, and helping out in the uh, and and promoting the banana festival so obviously it's going to draw a lot of people there you know and uh you know it could be you know a lot of uh, a mix mixed bag of individuals in the port wanimi area thank you javier now that you now that you mentioned september i'm i'm, I'm sitting here thinking about the preschool centers that we have we have 27 preschool centers throughout ventura county uh, however, we're on summer break. There's only uh, two of those centers that are full day year round. Uh, one here at our central offices, uh, our Julie Irving Head Start and Toddler Center, and then a center in Wainini. Uh, so, so it probably makes more sense to have the event in September because our staff will be recalled in uh, mid-August. And then we could also promote it uh, across to families that are 27 Head Start centers versus uh, the two that will only be open during the summer months. Good. Yeah, Jack, also, uh, you know, and uh, in school starts, uh, I think the third week in August. So that would provide an avenue for getting information out to all these families that, especially young families with young children, who are so excited about their children being in school. And then you have a lots of four and five-year-olds that will be starting uh, at various, not only uh, existing providers of early childhood education, but some of the districts are increasing the number of, in, of children that they're gonna be serving as well. So right. uh, my other comment has to do with uh, trying to mimic, uh, replicate, uh, your efforts that you are scheduling in the Oxnard Wenemi area and perhaps uh, scheduling something with uh, some of your assistance in Santa Paula. There's 60,000 residents in the Santa Clara Valley and sometimes we uh, we just don't, uh, we're, we're not in line, you know, in uh, the view of uh, as far as services are concerned. So, uh, so anyway, just a shout out for the Santa Clara Valley. All right, all right. Thank you for, for always uh, uh, bringing to our attention the importance of not forgetting our community in the Santa Clara Valley, which is in much need of support and assistance and programs and outreach. So thank you for, yeah. for bringing that. Yeah, and if you, you know, one more uh, comment. If you can uh, nail down a date this, yes. this afternoon, then uh, we have our last uh, round three meeting this coming Monday with all of our partners that will be uh, online so we can share these ideas and that date so that we can enlist their participation and collaboration as well. Yeah, I'm thinking that it's going to be more in September because that's the start of our of our program year for our Head Start centers. I think I said clinics earlier. I was thinking of my days at Clinicas del Camino Real. <laughs> uh, so our preschool centers. Uh, and then our, our staff, our instructional staff, about, probably about 175 to 180 staff that are right now uh, off for the summer. But we bring them back around the second to third week in August yep. for, pre for pre service training. So then we can also promote it there during our pre-service training if we have a date in September. Right. And then they can also be part of our, um, our messaging out to our families that we serve um, in the program. So, and, and as, as Anita mentioned, they'll, they'll mention it in our, our child care program department with our subsidy and resource and referral. And uh, with Luis's efforts under our community outreach, we could get the word out. Uh, once we have a date set in September. So 
How does that sound in terms of tar a target date in September? Is um, how do folks feel about September as uh, the first date? And we'll we'll nail that down. I think September is a good date um, because you know, like you said, school has already started. Even end of August is good, but September is better because people are already thinking about making sure they got everything in order. You know, with their kids in school and you know, getting them vaccinated if they need to be vaccinated. Um, what we found is that because uh, we've had events on on during the week and then on Fridays and Saturdays, we even had some on Sundays. And what works the best has that we've seen is a Friday, having it a Friday evening and being able to have that open up until seven, maybe seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. Uh, we saw a lot more traffic coming in at that time. Saturdays was challenging. It was challenging. The only thing about having it with along with another festival, I don't know if there's been clinics that have put a clinic along with like a festival, a fun event like that, like where a lot of people are coming in, if they've had success with that. I know that the the on the Thursdays when they had a clinic, OPAC did a, uh, for their, their Thursday food truck, um, they had a clinic and it was only for a couple of hours. So I don't know how well it went. I, I, when I got there, they were already gone. So I don't know if, if they had good successes with that, but um, I would recommend it be like on a Friday evening you know, starting, you know, from the early afternoon, I mean, late afternoon to early evening. What what time would you, uh, what time have you used like, those events? Four o'clock or three, three to seven, three, three to seven three after to seven. school is out, uh, three to seven, seven thirty, three to eight if we could. <laughs> um, some clinics, you know, this last one we had um, because the county did it, they only did it four hours. They were only going to be there till six, but they ended up staying. The, the nurses were great. They were awesome. They went ahead and accepted more people that were coming in. So they stayed till like almost seven o'clock. Great. I know the events that we've done, we haven't hosted any pop-up clinics. I know uh, some of our staff like Sandy and, and Nature Nita and Luis have attended other events. Uh, we, we did a lot of events for the PPE uh, distribution for family child care providers. We hosted a couple of those. Uh, we always did our event on the PPE distribution on Saturday mornings. And uh, we, we had a lot of success because of the promotion uh, and the getting the word out and the flyers and the communication and, and our resource and referral department staff were always available to answer questions about the event. So uh, we can go either way. I think, uh, you know, I think it, it's all in the manner of the communication too and the, and the constant following up. And we do robocalls, text messaging, uh, email, uh, social media postings. And again, if we wait till September, then we can promote it amongst all the families that are, are uh, gonna be part of our Head Start and early Head Start program in the fall too. So. But we'll take we'll take that into consideration as well. Good 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 suggestion. I will look into the state to see if they know what the format is going to be for the zero to five to see okay. if they'll allow for um, what they call a mobile blitz, which would include the food truck and the radio remote. A Spanish radio remote having it on the spot is key. It was very instrumental in getting additional folks to us. Even though this last Friday when we had only the radio remote because of comp changes in the scheduling of the time. We had the radio only there for a shorter time, but it still brought people in. It brought people there on the spot because they knew then they heard about it, that it's happening in their neighborhood and they came down. So I'll look into see, hopefully I'll get an answer by next week to get uh, more information about how they're going to handle that for the next round. And we'll also do our due diligence on uh, CDR and talking with our program director, circling back with them. Uh, I think they'll, as Luis indicated, they're fully supportive of the uh, of participation. Uh, I just want to nail down, you know, the dates that uh, we're going to propose, and make sure that that works for uh, for them as well and and their staff. Luis, you had uh, your hand up. Oh uh, yeah, just a quick question. Just want to throw this one out there. So if we were thinking about that far in advance for the first one, were are we thinking about maybe doing a discussion night or a town hall a month before or? Or, or not have the town hall? Well, we'll certainly have the opportunity to, to do a town hall if we, if we have the first one in September. 
Uh, you can also just get the word out to the community about the, the event that's going to be planned next the following month. Um, I think what we need to do is, uh, is have a follow-up discussion uh, just specifically around pop-up clinic and furthering this uh, conversation. And uh, that'll give us some time for Yvonne to do some follow-up, uh, for CDR to do some follow-up again with uh, our ECE task force and, uh, and also just talk about it uh, with the key members who, uh, who want to participate. And I see that we're all on board here with those that are here today and uh, we can identify any other community partners that we think we wanna invite to the table to participate. Uh, so that's, that'll be the next step uh, is convening a, a pre-planning group so that we can start brainstorming and really nailing down a, an actual date, time, and uh, who will be uh, our, our participants at that family-friendly event. Nita? Or Thanks, Jax. Um, yeah, is... Javier, I'll, I'll, right after Nita, I'll, uh, I'll turn I'll it back to I'll make it quick, Javier. Um, I was just thinking what Caridad was saying, and um, I know this is kind of a shameless plug, but, you know, in our last episode with Nature Nita and Sandy Sanitizer, we did have Dr. Stellar, and she did uh, provide a lot of information and about misinformation. So perhaps, you know, you can use that to share uh, in, this, in these classrooms, if available, if that's a possibility, because then that would also continue uh, to squash any of those misinformation and to really help ease those um, those thoughts that, and and what you know because I, I do understand what she was saying you know and a lot of times even when Dr. Stellar said one of the questions is is your best friend a good person to ask about the vaccination and and whatnot and she's like well if your if your best friend is a doctor then yes you know but um so it, you know that's also an idea I just wanted to throw that up great thank you thank you Nita have yet uh, yeah um I was just going to throw this out as an idea, but, you know, uh, talking about the town hall uh, meeting, uh, you know, having, I know that during the time of the census, we did a, a car car uh, caravan throughout, uh, from Santa Paula up to Oxnard and, and around the communities. Uh, you know, I mean, that if that's something that will be possible to do, obviously for, for this is more for Gavino, the, uh, the, since we're going to be ending the, in June the uh, vaccine, uh, the VCCF funding for the vaccination campaign, I know it's still going to continue, but wouldn't it be nice to end with a bang by having a car caravan driving around the community, thanking everybody who got vaccinated, and, uh, and then also providing the information about kids under five being able to get vaccinated. So. You know, I, I, I think that that will be really nice to invite all the partners to kind of showcase their successes by driving around our community and thanking everybody. So that's an idea. Great, great, great idea, Javier. So uh, thank you all for your uh, rich conversation and discussion and feedback and uh, ideas and, uh, and, and to be on board to support in this effort. Uh, looking forward to to hosting a pre-planning meeting with our community partners uh, soon. Uh, so uh, although this is our, our final meeting, uh, we'll continue to keep in touch to uh, make this uh, pop-up clinic a reality here in our, in our community. So uh, we'll, move in, we'll move into item number five. This is just a, just a round robin, no particular uh, order. It's voluntary. Uh, anybody wants to provide a uh, update on behalf of your respective organization, uh, this is the time to do so. Anybody would like to share anything that has not been shared uh, yet? Nita, you have your hand up. No, sorry. No, oh, that's okay. <laughs> All right. Does uh, it looks like we? I think we we really uh, contributed to the conversation on item number four. So it doesn't sound like there's any CBO updates. Uh, so we'll have our final words and comments again. I, I just, it's been such a, such a, a pleasure working with all of you alongside all of you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this group was formed as part of the 2020 census and then the vaccine outreach and awareness initiative. Uh, I really have enjoyed our, our collaboration and our partnership. 
and acknowledge the great work that uh, we did uh, together. And uh, I really, really, really am uh, uh, proud of the work that we've done here to uh, just better serve our children and our families here in the communities and keep up with the great work. And uh, on behalf of uh, CDR and my co-chair, I don't know, Terry, would you like to say a few words, but I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I, I just want to tell everyone how much I really appreciate everything that they've done. And it looks like it's going to be really exciting and everyone is very engaged going forward, which is absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. It's really nice for the community to have this group of people working together, working individually and especially together. Thank, Thank you, Terry. Can Thank I do you. a quick toast, Jack? Yeah, do do a, I have a little bit of cafe right here. I just cafe wanna, or water. Whatever the case might be, but I just want to, again, thank you all. Uh, we will have minutes from today's meeting because the dialogue was so rich. Uh, Luis will prepare the minutes and send them out to everyone for your review. Uh, and again, we'll do our due diligence in the interim and then we'll follow up. But again, a toast to all of you and the great work that you're doing in the community and Thank you for those who joined us for the first meeting today, our first and final, but it sounds like there's a lot more work to be done and we'll figure it out. Uh, we'll get creative and uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to continue working with, with all of you. So have Thank a great you for day. the invitation. All right. Thank have you. a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Thank Gracias. you. Bye, Gabino. Bye, Gabino. Bye, Sandy. Bye, Sandy.